mic because then everybody can hear it. Oh, sorry. Our, our parts were recording. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on what my answer is and where it will appear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do a lot of like, related content and interviews and stuff online, so I, I do want to get this, at least a little bit of this because I think a lot of us kind of grew up on your voice, doing a lot of the work you do. doing. It's great that you're still able to voice act in this same age. I'm not too great. I'm, I'm delighted that I'm still able to do little boys. <laughs> Quite a resident, whoa, okay. Quite a resident. Um, my first question is, I'm sure what, I think a lot of people want to find out something with regards to this, the new Digimon series. Yes! Uh, I unfortunately know nothing about that because no one has asked me to increase my role. Oh. And I could in just a nanosecond too. Uh, <laughs> so I would be delighted to do it. You would? Sure, of course. It was one of my favorite characters. I think a lot of us would like that, wouldn't we? It's like a dream come true. Yeah. Thank you. And that was definitely right. It just wouldn't feel the same without sort of hearing the voice. I totally agree with that. You know? And I'm happy to do it. I even go to Texas if they would find me. <laughs> as long as it's not during the run of South Park. That was a happy uh, <laughs> yes, that's one question. That's the second. The second one is because you already, it sucks because you already said this, but again, I want sort of a record of this. Could you give us the Izzy's catchphrase again? Like with a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah, and I'll tell you before I, I say it where that came about, and I'll tell you in Izzy's voice. Okay, so we had done the first episode, and we were thinking, and this doesn't always happen, we were thinking, he needs a word, he needs a word. And so that weekend, Mona <laughs> went home and happened to watch the movie October Star. Do you know that movie? Yes. 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 Okay. Do you remember when the rocket goes off for the first time and it's successful and the redheaded kid says a word? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what the word was, even though he mispronounced it? He said, Purr did this. So I went up. Uh, or she went, whoever, one of us went, or the both of us went together. We went and told the producer, I said, I got the word, I got the word, it's perfect, it's perfect for him. Prodigious. So, as is he. Prodigious! Except that Izzy had to talk faster than the speed of light, so it was really more like, prodigious! Does that answer your question? <laughs> throughout my childhood. I have admired you and I just, oh, I love you because you're just so awesome. <laughs> Did I take you home with me? <laughs> um, and um, I just want to know, when you became a voice actor, what really inspired you? Because, you know, throughout a lot of your characters, you were just so into it. I mean, throughout your voice, when I could hear it, I mean, you were just so into your role. And like, what really, like, what really inspired you to get really into those characters that you did? Okay, true story. I started out in college wanting to become an English professor, all right? And most of my life, though, from the time I was old enough to, before I could talk, they told me to home. So I used to go home, listen to musicals, sing and dance. But growing up in a rather conservative town with conservative parents who did not believe you should ever go into the entertainment industry, even though I had voice lessons, that was my goal was to become an English teacher. My first husband, uh, who was in college with me, said after he was like, yeah, I'd really like to go off for that, that show. I'd really like to go off for that show, funny, so why don't you get off your <clears throat> and do it? <laughs> and I did. The legacy of my first marriage. That and my name, Marshall. That is, my, my maiden name is not Marshall. So I did that, and I came, it, that was in the Midwest, and then I came out to Los Angeles because when I graduated, one of my English professors said, 
LACC had a really outstanding theater arts program. Now, mind you, I knew nothing about voiceover, and the only cartoon I really grew up loving was something called Rough and Ready. And one of the voices on that, I think somebody back there knows, was the voice of Dawes Butler. But I didn't know that at the time. You have to remember animation and anime, first of all, nobody knew in this country what anime was back in those days. Okay, you guys have, have, have learned to appreciate it because you do, I think it's also gotten better. So anyway, I go out to Los Angeles and I take uh, these classes and I take a class in voice production, I work toward an MFA, and I'm a struggling actor who never quite fit in anywhere, okay? And I'm teaching fifth grade at a private school and one of the teach, uh, one of the, this is fifth grade, and one of my students at that time was doing um, uh, The Little Prince on an album, not a CD, an album, with <laughs> the late Richard Burton, although he wasn't the late Richard Burton then. And she kept nudging, oh, you gotta take voiceover, you'd be so good, this class of dolls, but it was just so wonderful to shut her up. <laughs> I took the class, and I have to tell you that that was, for me, at least a professional epiphany and a spiritual epiphany as well. I guess an epiphany is an epiphany. <laughs> because there was something about walking to that room, partly it was Dawes, who just loved us dearly. And it wasn't a class that was cold, this class was warm. He wrote us things. He encouraged us to work on our strengths and our weaknesses, to take the copy. He used to say, if you can't act in 30 seconds worth of copy, you can't really act. And I had been classically trained, you know, to be a serious, dramatic actress. My whole life came along because for one moment, I was open and willing to take direction from somebody. If I hadn't listened to that woman, if I had just, oh, yeah, 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 I would not have had this career because I never imagined this. And then everything, then everything opened up. And back in those days, it wasn't just anime. You did anime, you did everything. So that's what I did. And then my very first animated job was doing, um, and I didn't know what anime was, and I didn't know what ADR was, but here's another odd story. And, and one of the advantages of being older is you can look back and you can see how when you make decisions based on an open heart, your whole life changes. You know, your whole life changes. All my life I wanted to perform. Not because I needed love and adoration, but because there was something about reaching out to people, okay? That was important to me. I, I might not have been completely cognizant of that, but that was what was important to me. So, um, so I, I, I take the class with Dawes, and at that time, Dawes wrote me a piece about an, a woman who ran an ad agency, and her name was Majesty. In Los Angeles at that time, there was a theater program uh, that was meant to be, uh, they were casting uh, for theater groups that were bilingual and multicultural. And I thought I was auditioning for a puppet company, I'm sorry, for a theatrical company. What they wanted was puppeteers. My director, Paul Hansen, was a very wise man. That was, this was just when the Muppets were really becoming popular. And he felt it would be a lot easier to take an actor and teach them how to work a puppet than to take a puppeteer and teach them how to act. So I go in and I audition with Majesty and I do one of my original songs and I get the job. <laughs> and then we, the callback was it was a panel of people, true story, I swear. And one of the questions was, how do you feel about getting on your knees? <laughs> yeah, my mind went exactly where all the <laughs> I'm thinking, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, it's a puppeteer company. <laughs> and at that time, unlike uh, the Muppets, were, and, and I did later did puppet videos where you were on, you know, you're on levels, right? And I'm short, which is why I could never work with the Muppets. By the way, you had to be five foot eight. <laughs> so when, once I said, "Oh yeah, sure, sure," and I'm going, but you know, I've never worked with puppet. So anyway, I got the job. Why this becomes important is because my first anime job, which I didn't know was anime, and I didn't knew nothing about ADR or looping. You all know what ADR is, right? For those who don't, is there anybody who doesn't? Automated dialogue replacement, okay? And this is way before Pro Tools. So I auditioned for this job, and I get the part of a girl in something called Harlock. And I go, and, and I'm thinking it's original animation, because by that time I had done my first uh, little radio job, and you know. 
that was voiceover to me. I knew nothing about it in New York, nothing about anime. And I thought, wow, these are really interesting characters. And I'm at a podium, and here's the monitor, and then there are all these little numbers. Okay, the numbers represent the frames, right? And so I said, yeah, you have to match the, the sync there. I'm going, oh, okay. And for some reason, my first time on, I was able to do it. But now I realize it was because when you talk as a puppet, that's what you're doing. You're matching sync to what you're saying. So it began to be automatic. So, and uh, what can I tell you? I love it. I grew up a tomboy. And I was my father's little boy because the first daughter was a girl. <laughs> the first daughter was a daughter. And there was, uh, if any of you know who Brian Cummings is, wonder, okay, wonderful voiceover actor. Became friends with Brian out of Dawes' class. Uh, Nancy Cartwright came later. Um, and Bob, um, uh, oh, um, Bob Bergen. Thank you so much. <laughs> I want to say Bob Buckholz, who also is a wonderful performer, but not with Dawes. Um, so, uh, that was kind of the story, you know. I, I kind of fell into anime and loved it. And then, fast forward a few years later, when Spirit of the Way was being done, we did background for that. Half of us knew anime and appreciated it. Half of us are going, not me. Like, <laughs> oh, what is this? Is that that Japanese stuff? By the end of that session, they were bored. And that was very rewarding for me. Anyway, that is the story of how I got started, and I love it. What can I tell you? I love being in a little boy's consciousness, but I also like doing my villains too. Yes? Can I ask one more question? Of course. Out of all the characters that you've ever done, you have one that is like your top favorite that you've done? Like the I don't have one, one, but I do have a few. <laughs> Izzy is one. Yeah. We're, talking about, we're talking about anime, yes. and I adore him. I have never in my voice of a career had a character like Duran. If any of you have seen the American version of that series, he is the most off the wall character I have ever done. And the idea of him being that high energy and that manic and then doing things like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. That's really weird. It's just, you don't get to do that. You don't usually, in anime, for at least the characters I've done, you don't get that many levels. And I love him, but he takes three hours of doing him. It takes every drop of energy I have. <laughs> and yeah, I vocalize, I do yoga, and I do Pilates. I would not be able to do this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, sorry. This is Josh, by the way. He gets me to where I need to be because I would be totally lost. I'd still be looking for this place. Uh, you know what? Where is this? Yes. So, um, like everybody else here, I also do the Um, I also grew up on Digimon, but I think my favorite um, role that I've heard you voice is probably Toboy from Wolf's Race. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. By the way, one of my yes. Top. I loved him. Oh, and it's so, the show is so serious and it's so dark and um, a lot of the shows that I've heard your voice in are, you know, shonen and, you know, high energy and a little bit more cartoony than that. So could you just tell us a little bit about what working on Wolf's Rain was like versus your other uh, First of all, I loved doing the character. He was, about that time I had also done a character for uh, Cowboy Bebop. And that character was a dark, very age. He was very old, but he was in the guise of a, a young boy. He was much darker than Tollboy, but it was that same kind of feeling. And you gotta understand, as an actor, this is heaven. You know, because where am I gonna ever play a part like that in this body? Never. Um, but um, doing Tollboy was really, it was an incredible experience because I'm an actor and don't just do cute voices. I really had to get into that mindset and one of the directions that Mary Elizabeth you know, made sure I had and stayed on was, you're more innocent. You're more innocent. You're, you're really kind of frightened. And because a lot of the characters I play are more aggressive, or more knowledgeable, like Izzy's very knowledgeable, that's why he speaks so fast and he's the computer wizard and so on and so forth. It was very challenging. 
You know, just like Jeraimon is challenging in one way, he was very challenging in another. And it was dark. It was very dark. Um, Steven Spielberg did a, um, he did a, uh, an animated uh, film about uh, the Jews leaving Israel. And I, I don't know whether, I'm not sure I remember the name of it. If anybody does. No, 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 no. This was, a, Prince of this, Egypt? This was the Jews going to Israel. Sorry. Um, Prince of uh, Egypt. That's it, Prince of Egypt. And even when I do background, I try to pay attention to what's going on. And in that film, especially being, I was born and raised with a very reformed Jew, you take on what you see. So in doing Wolf's Reign, you take on what you see. You become that. At least I do. And so when I, when I finished Prince of Egypt, uh, I was not in a very happy mood. When I would do Toboy, there was also kind of that feeling of, not sadness, but a heaviness. Because it took time to leave, just like it took time for me to get oriented into it. So I don't know if that's answering your question. Yes, oh, sorry. So kind of on the same subject of Wolf's Reign, because um, that's one of my all-time favorite shows as well. Did you have any specific uh, favorite character besides Toboy? I don't remember this character's name. But whatever <laughs> character, I'll tell you, well, you have to remember, I don't see this whole thing. It's just like when I do South Park, they hand me the sides. When I do original animation, I get the whole script, I can study it and see what's going on. When you're doing what I do, you don't get that look. But there was a scene where Bob Volkholz, whatever character he played, loses his, the love of his life. And that Mary Elizabeth played that, played for us. And it was just astonishing. Are you talking about Hub Lebowski? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because. Yeah, just remember one thing. I go in and I create these characters and I do them. <laughs> and then I need to move on to the next thing I'm doing. You guys have that great luxury of seeing them over and over again. Mm -hmm. You do truly know more, not about the specific character maybe, but about anime in general. But yeah, that show was so filled with outstanding acting and writing, mm -hmm. and you don't always get that luxury. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you liked the show, and I, I wish it had continued, mm -hmm. even though I died. <laughs> 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 That's it. They did it in Dallas, for those of you who might remember. It, it was all a dream. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Does anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? Yes. Mm -hmm. Atta girl. Yep. And actually, I never even watched that show. But I thought it was a very clever device. Did you have a question, Dean? Didn't you have your hand up? Um, what are some of your favorite video game characters that you voice? The Crawl. Do you know the... She was a snake person, dog like this. It was one of my favorite characters to do. <laughs> she was so delightfully evil. In <laughs> fact, I didn't enjoy doing it. It was cool. I'm not sure I remember his voice, but he was definitely cool. Uh, oh. And the dragon in Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. Oh my God! I have a question about that coming up. Okay. <laughs> Another character. I mean, you know, you do forget, it, it took, and, and I don't go around googling myself. Um, so I, you know, but that character, that was, first of all, in, in the Japanese, it would have been a male, and very seldom do they go from male to female when they do uh, English. So not only did I get to do it in one game. But then when it transferred and somebody else was doing it, I got to do it again. And that was an interesting session because we were in LA and they were in England. And they had real English accents. Yes. <laughs> Which, oh, wonderful. You know, at any time you can really take a character and have the freedom of, of some kind of movement in terms of interpretation, you know, often you're, you're confined because of the same 
And then, then that's another interesting challenge because you have to make it work. You have to take the direction and make it work for you. But oh, I love that drag. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got in? Oh, okay. We'll move toward. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, just a quick question. Um, how's your first Anime Boston going? Oh, I'm loving it. And the people, I was very frightened. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the reasons I like doing voiceovers is because there's anonymity. And, uh, and so, but you know, this seemed like a good thing to do. And I, I talked to my friends. I said, oh, come on, you're going to love it. And the costumes are great. And I said, oh, costumes? <laughs> and they are. I had to tell you, I am so bowled over by the costumes and the cleverness of them. I've been snapping pictures and sending them to the agent. And said, oh, look, and they're loving them. And then my friend said, see, we told you it was going to be fun. I absolutely love them. And you guys, first of all, you don't realize what, as an actor, especially doing anime, I don't even work with other actors. I mean, which is kind of sad. So one of the great things about this is I'm actually getting to sit down and talk to the other actors, you know, at night and stuff. But you just have no idea. And the, the thought that you're actually, like when you said, we grew up with your voices, and I joked about that at the uh, autograph setting, saying, great, I'm feeling older by the minute. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, you know, you hope exactly what I said uh, to somebody's question earlier, but you hope as a performer that you're able to reach out to someone. And my hope is, because I'm not in charge of the sales, I'm not in charge of, you know, pushing the product, I'm an actor. And I, I can only do my job be also because I have good direction, good writing, and a really fabulous engineer. So you don't get that feedback. When I was doing live theater, you got the feedback. When I was doing my own show uh, singing, you got the feedback. I had no idea. And you guys have made me feel so welcome. I just can't thank you. So um, bear with me here as I try to articulate this. But uh, that sounds like me. So <laughs> do you play? Huh? Do you play? No, no, no. This is a this is a video game guitar. This isn't real. Very much. So I was hoping to say you could entertain us. <laughs> ah, I heard somebody doing ukulele and playing out in the lobby. Are they here? here? <laughs> no, no. no. No, if they were, I'd say okay. could you sing a little something? Ah. Yes. Group in the, in the microphone. You Yes, use the microphone. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, to sing or to ask the question? I'll ask the question. <laughs> sing. Um, yeah. Okay, you want to sing a couple sing. lines? Sing the question. It's too long for that. Just, uh, <laughs> just what? Sing eight bars. My shiny teeth that sparkle. <laughs> Uh, okay, so again, uh, I'm going to try to articulate this as best as I can. Now, as a theater student myself and as a lover of stories, um, I will be uh, incredibly honest, I haven't been exposed to a lot of your work. Um, the only thing that I've been really heavily exposed to is the Drakengard series. And um, wow. it is, yeah, it was, it was shown to me. I'm, I'm in college right now and we're, you know, we've got, whenever we have downtime, we play a lot of video games, show each other and everything like that. And um, uh, a friend of mine showed me the Drake and Yard series. And I know that you said that, uh, unfortunately, you don't get to really look into the finished product of anything that comes out of your work or anything like that. But um, uh, I was just really uh, astounded at how much uh, Angelus, Angelus's voice completely fit into the world of Drake and Yard. It's, it's deliciously dark. It's something really... I mean, tangible and tragic, and it's incredible. It's incredible work. So, um, I know I just recently discovered that a couple voice actors, uh, uh, I, read, I read articles about voice actors not really getting to see the finished product of anything like that. But I guess specifically in the Drake and Guard series, because I'm curious, what sort of work, this was a while ago, I know you did Gabriella for Drake and Guard 3 as well, uh, the, another dragon, the really sassy one, and, um, <laughs> I was just curious as to what kinds of 
work you do to get into voicing specifically a dragon, somebody who isn't human? What are you told about the world of the Draken, what were you told about the world of the Draken Guard series in general? You could use another example from something else, but I was just really captivated by that series in particular. There's two things. One is going back to when I took the classes at LACC, their theater arts program. I took a class called Voice Production. And in that class, we learned the various parts of the voice. Um, so there's nasal, aural, guttural, yep. aspirate, and orator. I saw an interview with you actually where you were talking about these very things, yeah. Our requirement was once a week we had to take a classical piece, usually Shakespeare, or something from the Greeks, and believably use all of those voices. I have used that over and over again on the rare occasions that I teach voice production. That is what I teach. Now, so technically, there's that. Now, the private academy I studied at, after LACC, we used a combination of RADA, Royal Arts, right? Academic Dramatic Arts, yeah. And what is now called the New School. So I learned technique, and I learned being in a place, being there. So I was told that this dragon would die. I was told that she was a fighter and that she was very dark. Those were my directions. Wow. So I guess how long were you playing around with the voices then? How, lo how long did it? I mean, something like that. You mean in a session? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I know sometimes I try to get them out of the five minutes. <laughs> I was just going to say, Dawes, I was when, when Dawes, Dawes said, yeah. if you can't pick up that copy and act in a 30-second commercial, maybe you can't act. I had no idea that part of, uh, you know, this, this is what I want to leave you guys with. If I leave you with nothing else, because it's true of life whether you go into acting or not, everything you do, Stay focused on it, because you're, we're like sponges. We learn from everything, and we never know in a moment how important and how much use we'll get out of it. And you especially as an actor, take a look around, absorb everything that's here, because it will make you a better actor. And now I'm also writing, and, and I'm now working on an original uh, adult animation series. It's been close to my heart, and that idea came in the early 90s. And now I'm in the process of putting a package together to get funding. It's, um, it's positive, it's edgy without being crass. It deals with something that is not really dealt with, and I'm excited about it. But when I look back and realize that that's a, a whole lifetime of experience, and to be able to, to say, yeah, I can do this, and to have my agent interested in helping me do it, that's all uh, uh, accumulated. So, anyways, uh, did that answer your question? It did. Yeah. Good luck to you. What kind of, are you doing stage? Or you want to do yeah, it all? Stage work. Good. Stage work. Good. You mentioned your work on Captain Harlock being your first anime role, and I've seen that, but I haven't seen it dubbed. Who did you voice, and uh, what was it like? She was a little girl. Maya? And the only reason, so the name? Was it Maya in the original? Maybe. <laughs> oh, right, you changed all the names. You don't really want me to tell you what year that was, do you? You might not have uh, No, definitely, you were the front row. Well, maybe you were. <laughs> we're not, we're not both. Um, what was it like? Okay, first of all, I was working with uh, the, the woman who wanted the role, because they only wanted to use one woman, because, you know, there's never much of a budget for anime, um, was a, uh, a woman named um, Marilyn Schreffer, who at that time was doing the voice of Olive Oil, and the director really wanted to use her for everything. The client said, no, 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 we want this actor. I was brand new. So first of all, and I, and I was working with David Hall. Do you all watch CSI? Yes. yes. Do you know the um, the gentleman who um, is the uh, doctor? Yes. Okay. Who walks with the limp? Oh yeah. When I met David, true story. He first of all is a brilliant actor. He was on that. When I met David, he had just been in, in a car accident, 
in a fire where he had lost both legs. I have never in my life, even back then, heard him make one word of complaint or feel sorry for himself. And that was before, you know, now we're finding out so much about prosthetics, but back in, you know, in the 80s, you know, he was just an incredible inspiration to me, both as an actor and as a human being, and just salt of the earth, sweet guy. Anyway, I felt extremely, not unlike I felt when I heard I was doing this convention. And then it's, oh, this is new territory, and then when I saw the, the, the numbers and this, you know what numbers I'm talking about, right? Right, you're looking at numbers, you're looking at the words, and you're looking at the screen. Basically, you're doing multi-level chess for boys. Uh, and South Park adds another dimension to that. Um, so I felt slightly intimidated, but I do what I do in most circumstances and say, okay, you can either go with the fear or stay open and present to what's in front of you. And I did, and I found out I was really good at it. Thank you. Thank you. Liked it. So he'd have, have me go, Mon, 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 Monster Mon, a Monster Mon, a Monster Mon. Did you Mon? I thought I was saying you were. Same director. Nice guy, by the way. <laughs> Although at that time I felt like killing him. <laughs> Another part of the movie where Izzy goes, You got mail. Yes. Uh, does that please all of you when you yeah. said that? Maybe did that 50 times. Because it wasn't strong enough. You got you got mail! You got mail! You got mail! <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> one of the reasons that I'm still working, besides the fact that you, you can't really, I don't really have a dis distinguishable voice, so I can do a fairly wide range is because I would learn early on you show up with your talent and a sense of cooperation. And if you don't, if your ego gets in the way, you don't belong in that room. So, and it's really easy, especially when you do these conventions, to end up thinking that you are somebody. <laughs> your work is something. You are a person, or I am a person who's fortunate enough to be able to do something I love and obviously make a lot of people happy. So there's not a day, and I can do not, that I am not grateful for this opportunity, for the fact that I persisted in something I loved, that I'm still working, and that I had a lot of people like Dawes Butler, like Mary Kay Bourbon, the woman who I replaced on South Park because she died, but who I knew and who would have said to me, hey Mona, I can't do this, I'm not available, but you'd be really good. In voiceover, I have found that there are a lot of generous and kind human beings both in front of the mic and behind the mic. And as long as I, I keep right size about who I am and what I'm doing, I get along this way. So I encourage you, study, study. You have a sweet little voice, but learn how to protect it and use it. You know, take classes you're studying. I've taken a couple classes, but it's not what I need to study. Where do you live? Well, there's LA in New York, and apparently Texas is doing a lot of anime. Probably <laughs> over 18? I'm 25. You're 25? You're old enough to travel. Go on. <laughs> In the same boat as the last one, actually, I'm also aspiring to be a voice actor, and I was just wondering if you had any tips other than the study that we discovered. And I imagine there are other people who are thinking the same things. Well, 
you know, I knocked on a lot of doors. <laughs> Worked as a waitress three years as I was you know, trying to get a career going. Um, it, for me, you have to really want it. My first husband, God bless him, <laughs> used to say, um, you got to enjoy the journey. And the other thing I tell people on rare occasions that I do teach is that you have to develop an inner life. Now, there are plenty of classes that will tell you, do this and get your resume and your, your tape together and all that. By the way, agents used to take you on your tape alone or your demo. Not so much anymore because what has happened is that's become an industry unto itself where people say, come on, we'll make a good demo. If you cannot sustain those characters, it won't matter. You'll have the job a day and then you'll get fired. So basically what I told you, but what do you want to do? What kind of acting? Uh, anime and video games, to be honest, yeah. Well, you've got three places that seem to be cooking, right? LA, Chicago, Chicago. LA, that would be for ads. Uh, LA, Texas, and New York. You know, get a, get a good demo together. Make sure those are things that you feel you can do. Right. Okay, and sustain. And start submitting. You know, and if there are seminars or whatever, go. If there are workshops, go. Stay working. You know, stay working on. And I develop characters all the time. One of the reasons I do not uh, drive a convertible is because I am always dealing with my voice. Always. <laughs> and I do voice. I also do tag announcements for public grocery stores. And if you know anything about that, you're basically doing the price points, okay? But it's like 11 seconds. And it's fast, and sometimes the price points are very odd, like 3.2 to 5.7 ounce jars of whatever. <laughs> what, when I'm on the way to that session, I will practice things like PBTD kaga, PBTD kaga, red leather yellow, the red leather yellow, the red leather yellow, because you gotta wake up your, your voice, your tongue, your mouth. So you know, study and just be prepared. You know, get a day job and work your butt off. And if you want it badly enough, and you have an open heart about it, because the other thing I learned is, don't, let me say this, I don't want to feel bad if somebody I like and care about who's talented gets a job that I want. I don't want to live in that kind of resentment. So part of it is, is you didn't get this job, next, you're going on to the next, you're going on to the next, and learn from every audition you do. So being able to put your ego aside. And Always. The ego is not our friend. <laughs> it's one thing to feel confident in what you do, and then you're always writing that wrong. You feel confident, but it's a gift. It's a gift. You have a gift. You use it. Some people have a gift at uh, organization. I look at the woman that organizes this, Rebecca, and I am astounded. That is a gift. And I never heard her once during this weekend lose her temper or uh, belittle anyone. And she certainly made up all of us. So I, we all have gifts. You discover what they are and you go for it. Um, just a question about Naruto and voicing Haku. Uh, uh, according to Wikipedia, Wikipedia didn't lie to me. <laughs> uh, you also Except did... that I, I don't do Wendy. I do do Red. Okay. Um, uh, you also voiced Inari in Naruto? Is that the little character you sorry. Uh, yeah, I, have to, I have to consult Josh. Yeah. That's the other little character. Yeah, yeah yes. like, uh, that arc in Naruto is my favorite arc, uh, because it just got perfect to darker and the plot thickened. Um, what was it like voicing two characters in that arc, if you still remember? Well, you, I, I will tell you this, because I gotta be honest with you. It was a long time ago, even though they seem like, were they over several episodes? Uh, I believe so. Okay. Those episodes I do at one time. Okay. So, and I don't get to see the same arc that you do unless I was consistently watching the show. What I will tell you is, in a session like that, and that was run by Mary Elizabeth, I think, um, she'll say to me, okay, this is a different character, this is a different boy, this is the boy you did, and she'll play me a voice sample. And then she'll describe the character of the boy she wants me to play, and then I have to then find it. So I think the first boy, this was Naruto as a, as a boy, right? As a, as a young boy? Not the character you're talking about, the first character? Yeah. Okay. 
If I'm not mistaken, his voice was lower. Do you remember? <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> it's been a while since you. Anyway, I will take, unlike, the, sort of like the question I answered for him, I'll hear what it is and then I have to figure out what the separation is. You do that a lot in voiceover, unless you're doing an ongoing character. Like Doraemon has a very distinct voice and I'm doing them all the time. But if it's been a, a week or so since I've done him, they'll play me the last few lines. And then I'm there. Um, have you yeah, answer your question at all. Yeah, I um, But just in a situation like that, Naruto, where you have like multiple characters in the same series that you voice, have you ever had a talk to yourself before? Oh my god, yes. When I go right, I do it all the time. Sure, I do it on South Park. Part of that is going back to placement. Remember I talked about the placement? The different placements? And I'll use Rainbow Breakfast as a perfect example. I was described what those kids had to, had to, what their personalities were. There was Red Butler, and he was kind of a, he was kind of a spunkier, uh, not so forward in the mouth, uh, Izzy. This was way before Izzy. So that was a separation, right? It was forward, it was male. So the whole consciousness and energy was different. Then there was Canary Yellow, who was sweet. She was sweet and kind of nice, and she was yellow. <laughs> and then there was Patty O'Brien, who was spunky. So she was kind of easy to voice because she was spunky and she was forward. Hear the separation? So once I can separate those out, it makes it easier to talk. Did that, are you, did I answer your question? Cool. I have two questions for you. So in Persona 3, you voice Chidori. Yes. <laughs> I was wondering if you have played any of, that, any of the games in that series. OK, true confession, no one hate me. I have never played a game in my life. Okay. <laughs> if anybody wants to instruct me, I would be interested. I'll help you. And my second question is, um, out of all your characters, who do you think you relate to the most? Oh, there's, there's not just one. You know, I, I relate to Sh Sheila Bluflowski because, you know, I grew up in that environment. What? What are you talking about? I, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I think that we're born with certain kinds of energies. Um, when Joan Rivers was really popular in, in her younger days, let me see if I can get um, Oh, oh, wake up and smell it off. What is the matter with you? Not too far away from Sheila with, with Kyle's mom. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain energies that you have to tap into that make things a lot easier. Like, I think a Wendy Lee, to me, is like an anime character brought to life. And Wendy has that natural anime kind of sound. Same thing with, um, uh, I'm not going to get her name right. Who's the, the uh, uh, come on. The, there's uh, Lorna and who's the other girl? Sherry. Sherry. Sherry, if you listen to her voice, and, and you, if you're around her at any length of time, I'm not saying she's, an anime character, I'm saying that the rhythm that she has is very much like that, okay? Does that make sense? My rhythm is, it, it's an eight-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that has something to do with one of us, tomboy. I do love my husband very much. But there's something about doing little boys in that energy that relates to me. <laughs> Not me, that <laughs> And if any of you remember, there was a film that actually won the Academy Award. It was a Bergman film called Fanny and Alexander. Any of you know that film? It's a wonderful Bergman film. It's outstanding. One of my first gigs was playing the boy, Alexander. There's nothing like watching a movie and thinking, oh my god, I'm going to play a 12 year old boy who gets seduced by an older woman. <laughs> <laughs> so we do the movie, and I'm dating this man, right? <laughs> so we're watching the movie, he's looking at this. He's looking at the boy, and the voice coming out of the boy, he's looking at me, he's looking at me. He's like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's hard to say, but then I think about, you know, the dragon. And there's that dark, solemn chance to be brooding, and I relate to that. 
I'll just go back to something an early uh, singing teacher told me. Each and every one of us has within us all the capabilities of human kind. Everything from being kind and loving to being um, a slut. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. We all have that. What do you entertain? It's like the story about the two wolves. Everybody has two wolves inside of them. One's dark and one's light or one's evil and one's good. Which one do you feed? So I have that. What's great about what I do for a living is I can actually bring them out. As long as I'm open and in touch with them, bring them out and put them to work in a positive way. So, ten, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Yeah, funny you should mention that you tried, uh, uh, tried out the puppeteering because you were the animated voice of Morgan Frangle. That's right. But I also uh, actually did puppets yeah. for, uh, for all of but Blast Off and, um, and Bubby's Boarding House. That's a fun. And I, by the way, Fraggle Rock. You already know what's best for each other. Don't you have a little voice inside you? Broke my heart that series did not go. Hmm. I love it. Yay! Um, so, earlier on you introduced a couple of little tongue twisters and whatnot to get your voice going. Could you maybe show us a couple more, maybe teach us a couple? Sure. Um, where there's red leather, yellow leather. Do it. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Can you see why you would do that? It makes your tongue work. Then there's, hey, this is an old one. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Hey, Peter Piper. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickle, pickled peppers where the pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. Obviously, you say it slowly, then you speed up. Um, let me see. You know the tip of the tongue? Ooh, that's good. What is that? The tip of the tongue, 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 the tip of after, sorry, sorry. It keeps me in line. He has a whip. Yes. Um, could you just describe how you were in high school? Like, <laughs> at 16 and 18 years old, I weighed 205 pounds, did not fit in. Aww. It's okay, I don't eat. <laughs> Honey, I don't think any of us that become performers or come to these things fit in, but we do this Let me just qualify yeah. that sense of return on me. <laughs> the great thing about living today, instead of back when I was your age, is that there's so many more outlets to be creative, and you don't have to fit into that groove. You know, I, I mean, there was nothing like this when I was growing up. But oddly enough, what I did learn to do, I worked backstage when we did the high school shows. And even though I had, a, I had a, went through a lot of rejection with a, um, a music teacher, my fellow seniors liked my voice enough so that I ended up singing at the senior lunch. So you never know. You never know. You, you take what you have, feel good about yourself, and find your way to fit in. That's why I never do. Could make it in theater. I did not fit in. I got more rejections in theater, and oddly enough, found a place where I could thrive. If it works for me, I'm no different than you are. You just gotta find what works for you. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, three points, if I may. Uh, first of all, um, uh, she mentioned Chidori from Persona Three. Um, I just want to say personally, like you know, the whole storyline with her and June Kay, you know, been developing the relationship, you know, her pretty much sacrificing her life for him. That like brought me to tears and I loved it so much. Oh, I'm yeah. glad, thank you. And you know who really needs credit also are the writers. Oh yeah. You know, if I don't have the words, I well, can't make the characters. Of course it's the way you did it too. I just love her voice so much. You know what I will make sure that that was done at Cup of Tea. And I will make sure that I tell them that. I mean a lot to them. Thank you. And uh, secondly, uh, probably the probably one of the age-old questions of Naruto, Haku. And you, you know, just coming from your opinion, the English version, 
is Haku a male, a female, or a male to female transsexual? I mean, do you think that they told me? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think? Because I, I will tell you how I. I know the actual answer. Can I answer? Yeah, go ahead. Just a very pretty boy. <laughs> and how I played that was I tried to stay very straight into just being as neither. And if that makes sense. Is that idea? Right. And uh, third question, uh, last but not least. I found this out on the internet. Yeah. Good. It, it was from like, you know, several sources. You, you know, nothing like weird or anything, but uh, there is to be a Fraggle Rock movie. And as far as I know, no one has asked me to do this. Uh, hey, you guys have more power than you think. You want it done? Write to the people who are producing it. Listen, years ago, I did a demo for Astro Boy. I was Astro Boy. Wait, that demo was taken to Japan. They used my voice and Tony Pope's voice, who did the professor, as a prototype in Japan. When it came back here, I was not even given the uh, opportunity to audition. So, what? Wow. All I can tell you is I had a choice either hang on and resent that or use it as a story to tell and move on. But I will tell you this I love doing it. <laughs> it was fun. And I still have a box of Kleenex given to me by somebody at South Park with him all over it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Five, we have five minutes left. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, in the Digimon Adventure epilogue, who do you think Gizzy and Birak may have been? I'm not sure I understood that question. In the Digimon Season 2 episode, like uh, the very end of the last episode. Yes. Who do you think is the young Pira may I don't know. <laughs> Who do you think? Probably Mimi. Could be. I think that would be a question for the writer. <laughs> Anybody? Let, oh. Okay. Sorry. Like, That's okay. My question is like sort of related to like the industry. So, like I'm sure. taking like theater classes. I don't really see myself as an actor, but I did it because I wanted to understand better like how characters work. Because I'm really interested in writing. So yeah, I was wondering cool. if like if there was a way to get involved in like writing for like the industry and stuff like that. Uh, you know, all I can tell you is you need to be outwards, and and. They now have apprenticeships. Are you talking about writing animation? Yeah. I know that some of them, like Nickelodeon, uh, I think in Cartoon Network, first of all, do the research and find out if they have programs for young writers. They used to at Hanna-Barbera, and a lot of those writers have gone on to places like Nickelodeon and Bang Zoom, uh, and also I would contact Bang Zoom. Are you interested in writing original animation or anime? Uh, I'd say original. Yeah, or original? Yeah. Yeah, contact Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and Disney. Okay. And find out if there's an apprentice program. All right, thank they'll you. pay you lousily, <laughs> but <laughs> but you'll learn how to write. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Many of them. Oh my god. <laughs> Scared you didn't. Many of the writers now on uh, original animation are also storyboard artists, uh, and they're writing at the same time as they're creating storyboards. And they're also doing voice. And they're doing. Look at course. The the young man that uh, uh, animated the original, my original adult. Uh, uh, episode is uh, Christopher Nielsen, a very talented voice actor, but is an artist first. And that was done in Flash. And uh, he ended up doing uh, the male lead. There's only three characters in this. And he ended up doing the yes. I'm sorry. I don't know. Last big question. Okay, this might be the last question. That's a lot of burden. Who's got a good question? <laughs> burden is on you. <laughs> All right. So, oh. Hmm? Maybe if there's. If it's fast, maybe we can get to you. Go. Is it on? There it is. There it is. Don't okay, hurt. so um, is it a lot different working like on a show like South Park as opposed to um, a Japanese show like Digimon or any kind of I will of tell you the difference. 
I call South Park working, uh, doing uh, voiceover without a net, and the difference is this. That show is written and driven by the writers. We record Tuesday night at 10 o'clock in the evening for air date Wednesday. Oh my God. What? That means that during the week, Trey and Matt go in as they write, do the, uh, record. They go in, uh, they write, they go in, record. Unless I have a lot to do in the show, I show up Tuesday night and I, my job is to listen to Trey's voice and Trey speaks faster than the speed of light and does not do a, a New York Jewish accent nor a Southern accent when I'm doing Mrs. Clinton. And my job, because I don't have the whole script, I'm only given the sides. Most of the time I'm asking Mark Munley who books me, okay, what's going on here? Because I don't know and they have the advantage of knowing I, knowing I have to listen, figure out what's going on, match his sink, and still make it my own. That's crazy. One more, I, I promise this. Okay. So did that answer your question? <clears throat> what we're asking, yes. It's very, it's different, it's the same. It's harder. It's also very exciting. Sorry. Wait, <clears throat> well, you know, you brought up uh, Chris Diozzi, Herbifer. Who? Did you, uh, Who did Her I bring up? Herbifer, I'm sorry. The Chris Niosi. Oh, Chris Niosi, yes, her before. Yes, you, yes, yes, you, Tom. You, yeah, how was it voicing that um, character? Oh, it was fun. But I, I had not met Chris at that time. I, I actually met him at the beginning of last year. My husband suggested that I actually animate this idea that I had. Um, and I was doing an uh, uh, interview for the, the fan. And at that, they knew Chris. Chris asked me if I would guest on his show. I said yes. And then in, when I did the interview, I was talking about this original animation idea. And I said, I'm looking for an animator. I said, well, you, you just met Chris Neosi, he's an animator. Called Chris, he said he was coming out. He, he, I sent him the demo, a little bit I had. He said, yes, I can do this. I'll, I'm actually moving out to California. And then I asked him, because Bob Buckholz was too busy directing to do the voice that I needed. I asked him uh, to send me a demo. I heard it, he did it, and he's outstanding. So yeah, very talented. He's 25 years old. Yeah, I want to kill him. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a really sweet, nice guy. Very talented. If you haven't seen Tom online, look it up. It's it's a fun. It's a game idea. It's like it's, Dot Hack, kind of. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Inspired by Dot Hack. Actually. Yes. That's it. I want to thank all of you. You've made it great. <laughs>